Welcome back to Radio Faces. We're at our HCC Main Street studios. He's Andy Kalu from Sports Radio 610. I'm John McClain from the Chronicle, Cron.com and Sports Radio 610. Coming up, taped this week because he's gone on injured reserve, is Barry Warner. And check out the fat head in the background that is my best side. Take it away, Barry. I know this has come as a big surprise to you, but I don't have a rant. I'm very happy with the decision for Gary Kubiak to come back, even though it has raised more eyebrows around the National Football League than anything yesterday on Black Monday. Look, the record speaks loud and clear. The dynamic duel of uh, Gary Kubiak and Rick Smith has failed to perform to the level that you, the fans, want, and we in the media want, and most of all, the players want. But the fact remains, Gary Kubiak is incredibly fortunate that Robert C. McNair Jr. is the owner of this franchise. He has great regard for Gary personally and obviously professionally. And a borough, one of Bob's other enterprises, that being horse racing, he feels that Kubiak is the right jockey to have him win. Now, the fact of the matter remains, they are not going to win unless they change the culture and they draft meaner football players, tougher football players. And the one thing that came out of yesterday's press conference was music to my big Dumbo-sized ears. Kubiak is actually going to speak to several defensive coordinator candidates, not like the last time when they rubber-stamped Frank Bush as the defensive coordinator. And I love the fact that Gary is secure enough in his own skin that he has no problem getting a former head coach. That could mean, of course, the uh, morning line favorite, Wade Phillips, maybe a Marvin Lewis, maybe a John Fox. But he does have the courage of his own convictions that he wants somebody that he can turn the whole defense over to. And I could care less whether it's a 3-4, a wide tackle 6, a 5-2 eagle, they can find the players to play. And I've heard it on our radio station. I've seen it face to face with a man who wore number one for the Rice Owls and a visor. Oh, that's you, ND, when you say that Mario Williams can't play in a 3 4. The dude is a football player, he's a talented football player. Oh, by the way, they didn't think Bruce Smith could play in a 3 4. And all he did under Wade was to see his sack numbers go up and up and up and end up in Canton. And, N.D., the closest you're going to get to Canton is that if you buy a ticket and see some of your former teammates, oh, that was a cheap shot. But nonetheless, it's obvious that that visor, N.D., that you wore at Rice has clouded your vision. That's just like Barry to take shots when he's not here, you know, Hopefully when he goes to the doctor, that's why he's not here. They'll put a muzzle on him, and we won't have to hear those rants anymore. Anything to it about uh, Mario? What do you think now? Well, you know, first of all, I never said he can't play the 3-4. Once again, you have to look at your source. I said he wouldn't want to play, and I explained it on the Chalk Talk. When you're playing in a 3-4, you're typically playing a two-gap technique. And if you're a pass rusher, a guy who had nine sacks in only, what, 13 games, a guy who had 12 sacks before, you don't want to play head up on a five technique. 